What on earth are you doing here? Hello, little fella. Hello. My name's Jonas, and I've just found this teddy lying here beside the bookcase, and I don't know who it belongs to. Do you know? It's exciting finding things, isn't it? And it's especially exciting finding new friends. And that's what happens in tonight's bedtime story. Dragon meets somebody new and wants to learn all about them. This story is by Timothy Knapman and Gwen Millard, and it's called Guess What I Found in Dragon Wood. You'll never guess what I found the other day. Apparently, it's called a Benjamin. I didn't know what to do with it, so I took it home to meet my parents. Mum thought it might want something to eat, so she cooked it a delicious meal with all the punkiest fish and the rankiest, mankiest worms. But it turned out it wasn't even hungry. Can the Benjamin sleep in my room tonight, Mum? I asked. Well, I don't know if he's ever slept in a bed before, said Mum. But he does look very tired. So I gave it some pyjamas, and guess what? Its feet weren't stripy after all. The next morning, I took it to meet my friends. We're going to school, I said. And today, we're going to learn how to sit on a volcano. The Benjamin didn't look very keen. Perhaps there aren't any schools where it comes from. The moment he saw the Benjamin, Mr. Crockface said volcano sitting class was cancelled. And after all, you don't come across a Benjamin every day of the week. And we were bound to learn lots from something so strange. And the Benjamin was very strange. It got around without wings. It had soft, stick-out stuff on its head. And where had all its scales gone? Its claws were blunt. Its tail had dropped off. No wonder its roar was more like a squeak. And instead of breathing fire, it could only leak water out of its eyes. You see, it turned out that the Benjamin was homesick. He told us all about the faraway magical land he comes from. A land full of Benjamins. <laughs> Can you imagine it? They think dragons are story stuff and make believe. So, I said, you don't fly, you don't roar, you don't breathe fire. What do you do? I know. It looks silly, doesn't it? Apparently it's called football. The Benjamin promised it would be fantastic, and it was. Although you're not supposed to fly in the penalty area, or eat the ball, or burn down the goalposts. So many things to remember. We had an awfully nice afternoon. But when it was time to go home, the Benjamin looked like he was going to leak again. You miss your mummy and daddy, don't you, I said. And the Benjamin nodded. I'll miss you, I said. But I knew it was time for him to go. Besides, I really wanted to see the land of the Benjamins. So I asked my friends if they'd like to come with us. But I think they were all too scared. And I was a little bit anxious myself. I'd only ever met one Benjamin, so I didn't know how I'd cope with the whole country full of them. But the Benjamin was so happy to be going home, I couldn't help smiling. It was an awfully long way, far, far across the seas. But it was just as beautiful as he said it would be. Mind you, the Benjamins have a very funny way of saying hello. <laughs> when I got back home, I told all my friends about the wheel boxes and the wow noises and the whip whip whirly birds with the flashing lamps. They were very excited. Will you ever go back there? They asked. Of course, I said. The Benjamin wants to take me to school to meet his teacher. Or was that eat his teacher? I wasn't quite sure. I've got to go now. Football practice! And that story was called Guess What I Found in Dragon Wood. Oh. I wonder if Benjamin or the dragon left this teddy. Maybe I should find them. Or maybe I should wait until tomorrow, as it's time for bed. And I'll see you soon for another story. Good night.